I believe I hear a whistle, so we are about to get underway here again. We've got freight train jamming up against number 12, Stevie. Billy the Kid offering some defense right off the line on freight train, which is what Toronto wanted. Hold up freight train while Stevie gets out of that pack first and is the first lead jammer of this contest. Nice big hit there by number seven, Angry Johnny on Stevie. Freight Train, shockingly, has not completed the initial pass yet. We are still trying to get this jammer out of the, uh, the pack. And I do believe that I see a star pass. Number 81, Reaper takes that star and gets it firmly atop. Master Kate and Biff at our Centris Digital Jammer Line. Both jammers now trying to find a lane on the outside open. Empire Pack has moved in that direction. Jammers have separated, as has the pack. Nice work there by Toronto. Sleep dragging Masticate back. Well, we're almost halfway into this jam. Right. Free. Big hit by Sleep takes Masticate off of the track, is going to bring Masticate all the way back to turn one. I haven't seen a jam like this in, in ages where either jammer has able, been able to get out of the pack within the first 30 seconds. And we're well over a minute at this point, uh, and they haven't. This is an outstanding demonstration of defensive skills right now. We have number 80, Crypto, coming to the line for phasing off against number 1983, Yup Jub. Crypto started to the inside, then bounced to the outside. Oh, and look at that. Yup Jub in that inside line. It gets to clean clear and complete jammer, but at the tail end of that, gets taken off of the track, gets recycled back, decides to call it off and just hold everybody at that big goose egg. Got number 80, Crypto. Doing a little moving right off that line, trying to find the best avenue left to right. In to out, gets thrown off the track. Well, Yelp Jub just pushes to the front of the pack, trying to get a little bit of pack separation. And oh no, Yelp Jub being called on a cut track, sent to the crash course penalty box. Also, things that our new announcer warm up is just going to have to be saying, Yum, jump, yum, jump, yum, jump. <laughs> and Nat sneaks through, also probably thinking about pizza. It's like, I need to get out of this pack so I can get a pizza. Arms the jammer status. I wonder if there's any, like, you know, on their team is, hey, if you jam and get lead, you get cake or a cookie. I know there's somebody on my team that, that that's how we get them to jam. <clears throat> The adult version of a Scooby Snack. Exactly. Toronto SR has done a very good job of holding freight train up. Freight train now working against a brace to try on. Wow, freight train getting low, trying to break that wall, but Toronto matching that center of gravity. Nice teamwork there by Billy the Kid and Sleep. Continue to push against those last two blockers. Finally gets pushed to the outside and has to recycle all the way back to the jammer line. Meanwhile, Steve also working in the same pack and not getting anywhere either. Of course, as I say that now, has two blockers to beat as Austin gets spread out. No. High block now being issued, however, on Steve, and that is going to give Austin a power jam opportunity. Freight train trying to take up as much of this opportunity, get around that track fast to only contend with three blockers. But one of those blockers is sleep, and sleep is not one that you want to have to go one on one with. Wow. <laughs> you blink, and then all of a sudden it's just a three point game. Just that quick. It does. One good jam, and all the world has been changed. 
Kind of a matchup, 151 Bill facing off. And we are at a tie game, 24 apiece. 13 and a half minutes remaining in the game. Merchandise from all of these teams, especially my good friends at Austin Anarchy. Uh, I've been eyeing up their sweet uh, zombies merchandise on a lovely tie dye t shirt. But you know, hey, tournament merch is always great. Be sure to pick up your Battle of Bunker Hill merchandise. And this is a power jam for Austin Anarchy and Freight Train. Re engaging the pack at turn number three. Nice brace ball by number 222 Sleep. This free train makes contact and is trying to skirt towards the inside. Does so. Four points can be put up on the board for Austin. Both hitting the pack at the same moment. And a quick recycle once again on Sleep. Sleep is still stuck at turn number two. And coming back to line, we have number 69, Masticate, for Austin. Facing off against number 151, Biff. Biff finds the inside lane wide open. Picks up lead jammer status quickly for Toronto. Biff threw on the first scoring pass. Four points going to be put up on the board for Toronto. Number 222, Sleep, with a good hit outside. And recycled back to the top of the apex. Biff is called for a cut try penalty. That is going to give Austin a power jam opportunity. Scrum pack moving very, very slowly now as 2 2 Sleep gets called for a penalty. Meanwhile, Biff has completed the time in the penalty box. Both gamers are back out on the track. Fifth with one blocker to beat, that is number 13, Espain. Able to do so, four points could be put up on the board for Toronto. Number six, Nat, out for Toronto. Kiss enough against 2 1 8 in A big hit by number 81, the dictator on impact play. That's why he didn't set out of bounds and recycle back to the general line. That was a moment where I went and pulled myself away from the microphone so this wheel did not get captured. <laughs> Don't worry, everybody just thinks he was the wheel. <laughs> Meanwhile, just wait till you make me laugh. play able to break through, picking up Lee Jammer's status for Austin. Just wait till you make me laugh uh, on Mike and I snore. <laughs> Yes. But again, number 12, Stevie out for Toronto, facing off against 212 Freight Train. Freight Train continuing to try to work against Toronto. Toronto still doing a very good job of keeping the Freight Train at bay. Spencer Sleep, great control there, trying to get those arms out of the way so that there isn't any kind of penalty assessed there. Freight Train just pushing off of Spencer. Hostile Our team is proud to empower everyday living. That's awesome. Thank you, Sacco Bay. <laughs> Alrighty, Biff and Masticate ready for that whistle. Number 79, Colonel Angus anchoring this wall at the back of the pack, keeping the business to number 151, Biff. Biff is able to get around. Last minute hit there by Angry Johnny sends Biff off the track. What? This is going to be a power jam for Toronto. Good about to re engage with the pack. Sleep an outstanding job defensively of taking Angry Johnny out of blocking the attention there. Biff now working against the front of the pack at turn number 
too. Smart move by Sleep. If, if I were going to isolate and try to control one of the Anarchy blockers, it would be Angry Johnny. Or even just your regular uniform. Absolutely. Hey, if you don't have numbers, get them on your sleeves. <laughs> and speaking of numbers on the sleeves, I see that is number 1983, Yubjub as your lead jammer. Number 80, Rico for awesome. In post-COVID derby, I've seen up to 28 points in a in a single jam. We actually saw a junior put that score up and just went, when, when does this kid come to, to adult derby? <laughs> <laughs> and that is okay with keeping the score in favor of Toronto Roller Derby. Gets a jammer. Moving into intermission, Austin Anarchy 45, Toronto Men's Derby 67. We do see Stevie, number one, two, up for Toronto. We're gonna to be facing off against Freight Train 202 right off the bat again. Anybody not, uh, looking at penalties? Austin has three individuals with three penalties. Toronto has one. Ooh, and Stevie gets one little tap there at the end, again having to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Angry Johnny. Angry Johnny able to slow up enough that some additional blockers can recycle to the front, but Stevie still able to get out of the pack and get the jammer. Freight train bouncing back and forth, trying to get forward in this pack. However, 2-2-2 two -two -two sleep seems to be matching with Basically, position by position, doing an outstanding job of just making sure Freight Train has no movement. And I would like to give a quick encouraging shout out to one of our officials, Babble Fishy, who is on their 202nd game as an official. Thank you wow. very much, Babble Fishy. Wow, Babble Fishy. Let's give a big hand again to Babble Fishy. Like, our officials do so much, and we need to celebrate them more often. Thank you for all you do, folks in stripes, folks wearing all black. We love you. Ooh, and Big hit by Spencer Sleep. Sends Freight Train flying. Has to come back in behind the pack, but Spencer Sleep. While that was a big hit, suffers the penalty and smart move by Nat. Getting maybe a little bit of a rolling start there. Impact play deciding to block Nat a little bit and slow that momentum before moving forward themselves. And look at you giving those encouraging words. Nat was like, uh, Impact play was like, yeah, I can do this. I can do this. Gets out of the pack, calls off the jam. All the way back though. I'm sorry, that's number 016. Seven, Sneaky D directed them back to right in front of that jammer line. Stopped Freight Train right off the bat. But Stevie pushing away at this front of the pack, hoping to get an out of play. But that was a little bit of an offensive work there by Tony Phoenix. And Stevie's your lead jammer. Now engaging with the pack at turn number three. Quick spin maneuver. Five points going to be put up on the board for Toronto. Freight train now continuing to push. Has one block to beat. And you know who, if I was out there and I was a gamer and I needed some offensive help, I would go to? I'd go to number seven, Angry Johnny. Distant voices. I was like, where is that coming from? And one of our referees was skating past the, the track mic. <laughs> and still, anybody's game. Biff's so good on that outside line. 
Gets up on those toes, stops, dips underneath Bonita. Picks up lead jammer. Reaper trying to do a little bit of pick and roll. I'm also noticing something pretty spectacular with Toronto. One of the things they're doing is they're spreading the pack out. So every time Austin tries a star stash, they can see it coming well in advance. Yep. So they are not getting fooled by it, whereas Toronto is taking the star off in the middle of the pack and allowing that confusion to let them get through. Tony Phoenix still serving time in the pack. great on that outside. You know, outside is the harder route to take, but sometimes it's just the prettiest route to take. <laughs> Absolutely, and I think on that she actually follows Freight Train, mm -hmm. which is a very smart move because Freight Train is actually pushing the entire pack towards the center. I think this is the first time this hack we've seen Crypto. Crypto taking a little bit of a rest there. If, however, quickly on the outside line, picking up lead jammer status for Toronto. A beautiful spin maneuver, and as Crypto also breaks through. Both jammers on their scoring pass, however, the jam gets called off. And the score has picked up slightly from the first half, but not by much. This has been a very, very defensive domination. Absolutely. Ooh, a nice last minute just up there by Pip. Puts a hip on Freight Train. Freight Train just bounces off. Like, really? <laughs> okay, I'm gonna go around you. And Freight Train with the jammer. Oh no, and I'm seeing this being called on a forearm. Train looking like they're going to take full advantage of it, just double checking the penalty box. Black Bay out for Austin, facing off against Yub Jub. Yub Jub currently at the front of the pack, has one blocker beat, I believe that is Angry Johnny. It, it, it was Angry Johnny. Ooh. Thud on the floor, that was Tony Phoenix going down, which allowed impact play pass. Ooh! Stevie and Freight Train out for their respective teams once again. Freight Train trying to get to the outside, being pushed out. Be working at the front of the pack, able to break through on the inside. Picks up lead jammer status for Toronto. Freight Train starting on the outside. Pack now is starting to pick up a lot of speed and spread out. Jam gets called off. Definitely penalties. Much heavier in this second half. I'm seeing lots of interesting color coding here on our penalty tracker. Several people highlighted in yellow. I've got one in orange, which means that makes me think that warning, warning, warning. A diff. A diff. A diff. It doesn't feel like we've had that many jams, but the scoreboard doesn't lie. Yub Dub taking on Freight Train. Yub Dub, ooh, making eye contact there with Pandemonium Doll. Gets taken to the infield, but remains inbound, is out of the pack, and is really Jammer. Jammers are skate on skate. I hear the bench yelling that we are now under one minute in this game. So, Stevie, out of the pack first. Oh no, is out of the pack first, but being called on a cut track. That gives the opportunity to Crypto. Crypto picks up the jammer. Now Crypto can keep going, call it off. Maybe a good idea to watch that clock there. Um, you know, and to be honest, I'm a little surprised that the Austin block 
providing well on the side, but not providing much offense right now. Which really surprised me considering they are down. Yep. But Crypto able to break through eight points total on this jam so far. About to re-engage with the pack one more time. Oh, Crypto heading right into the middle of that tripod. He's gonna re-engage. Good recycled back on Crypto to the turn number two. Steve back out on the track. I'm hearing uh, maybe a direction of being played being called on Maniki. Has two heads to the penalty box. Stevie, one little foot around Angry Johnny. That completes the initial pass. Unofficially official score, Toronto Men's Roller Derby 138, Austin Anarchy at 107. Austin Anarchy, fantastic play today from the Anarchy. Again, amazing defensive work, keeping this in a low scoring game, controlling those jammers on both sides. High fives all around for the Toronto Men's Roller Derby. I see shirts are off being waved in the air. 